All right, well, welcome everyone. We're excited for you to join us today and learn a little bit more about SJSU and the Lurie College of Education. My name is Brian, I'm from the Dean's Office. I'm just here to welcome you all and get you all situated here and let you know that we're recording this event. So we will make the recording available afterwards on our Admitted Spartan Days webpage. So we'll include the link in those weekly emails that we've been sending you. So you'll receive that in your next email on Monday. Captions are available in the Zoom webinar. Um, so you can select the captioning button in the bottom of your toolbar there of your Zoom window if you wanna enable captions. Uh, those of you who are attending the webinar today, your audio and video are turned off, so you don't have to worry about being visible in the recording, but please use the chat to communicate with us and to communicate with one another throughout the event today. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of what we're looking at today, first we'll have a welcome from our deans, Dean Heather Latimer and Associate Dean Marcus Pizarro, and then department overviews from our faculty department chairs, Dr. Nidhi Mahindra and Dr. Emily Slusser for the departments of Communicative Disorders and Sciences and Child and Adolescent Development. We'll have a student panel from our, some of our student ambassadors from uh, both of those uh, departments of communicative disorders and sciences and child and adolescent development, as well as our graduate student ambassador from counselor education. And then we'll finish up with a Q and A and a preview of the rest of our upcoming events for Admitted Spartan Days. So with that, I'll turn it over to our deans. Great, well, thank you. Brian and welcome everyone. We are so delighted to have you join us this morning and we're very excited that you are becoming members of our Lurie College family. Uh, uh, we are really proud of the work that we do and the community that we have because we have a group of people who are committed to this mission statement that you see there on the screen. That at our college we prepare transformative educators, counselors, therapists, school and community leaders through an emancipatory approach across all that we do. That means we, we want you to come and interrogate deeply questions around how our society is structured, what are the challenges that are there, what is the impact of that on our individual lives and on the work that we want to do. And we do that in a way that is about building community and coming together to make positive change in the world. And if you are somebody who wants to have a different and wants to make a difference, wants to have an impact in the world, this is absolutely the place that you belong. And the group of faculty and students and staff that we have in our college really is just absolutely here to make sure that you succeed. We wanna make sure that we're supporting you in your academic, your personal, your professional growth journeys so that you're going to have not only an experience where you'll be able to pass your classes, but that through the experience here, through your classes, your field experiences, your internships, your research opportunities alongside faculty, your extracurricular activities doing both professional stuff and fun stuff uh, uh, that you will have a transformative learning experience because that's what college is all about is really that who am I now? Who am I becoming? Uh, um, and having that opportunity to really engage deeply in that question alongside like-minded colleagues and, and, and advisors who are going to, to challenge you and support you at the same time to help you grow is something that is really important as you're thinking about what you want your college experience to be. And, um, and I will also just share that we have a really strong record of success in our college. More than 90% of our first year students graduate on time and 94% of our transfer students graduate on time. Those are averages that are 20 points above national averages and more than 20 points above national averages and the highest across the university. And that's a testament really to the support of our faculty and our students and our staff uh, um, who are really about ensuring your success and ensuring that while you're here, you have a positive and rich experience that's affirming for you. I will also just share that at this time, uh, uh, we know that that can be a little challenging, right? We're all in this Zoom world that's a little odd. Uh, um, still, even after a year, it feels like we're ready to get out of these Zoom boxes because they don't quite fit what we should be doing as human beings. And I want to assure you that we are planning to be back on campus in the fall and we're readily making plans so that courses and, and uh, extracurricular experiences and integrate and, and interactions with office staff will have the opportunity to connect directly. That doesn't mean that everything's going to be back face to face. Obviously, things are going to depend to some extent on what the health conditions are uh, um, and large lecture classes may likely still be online uh, um, rather than putting 500 people in a room together although in our college we don't have a whole lot of 500 person lecture classes uh, uh, but 
there will still be some things that are online, some things that are hybrid. We found that sometimes some having some hybrid experiences can be helpful in terms of access to those learning opportunities and extend access beyond campus. But we also know that people are hungry to be back to community together on campus. And so the plan is that that will be an active part of your learning experience, certainly in the fall, but then moving forward even more so. So we want to assure you and reassure you that that is an expectation that we are planning for and making plans to ensure that it can be done safely and well. And I will just end and pass the baton to, to Marcos by saying, uh, again, we are really excited that you are looking at joining us and excited to have you as part of our family. We use that word family intentionally because we know that uh, it is something that is uh, uh, both the, the, the challenge and the warmth and the love of a family that is what we want to be, what we want to represent to you during your learning pathway. And we know that you're an essential part of it, just as in any family, any family member, if they go missing, we would miss them deeply. And we see you as an essential part of our family and we want to make sure that you're supported in here. We know that we will be stronger for having you here. The work that you bring, the knowledge and experience that you bring, the strengths that you bring from your life and your learning experiences thus far are going to make us all better and help us to grow. And so we're really excited to welcome you and look forward to having you join us in the fall. With that, I will pass it to Marcus. Thanks, Heather. She sounds excited, doesn't she? That's the Dean of the College of Education. And she's excited because it's an exciting place to be. I'm Marcos, I'm Associate Dean for the college. Um, and I guess I just wanna be a little bit of the hype man for the College of Ed, for CDNS, for Chad, for San Jose State, um, because it's an amazing place. It really, truly is an amazing place. If you haven't been to campus, if you haven't been able to, we look forward to hosting you. Um, I mean, the number one thing that makes it such an exciting place to me is the students, you all. I, they're they're just amazing and and fun and you know I got I, I work with students from East LA to King City to San Francisco to Oakland and Richmond um, and then all parts of the world as well and bringing all those folks together in the middle of this dynamic urban campus right in the middle of San Jose is so much fun and there's there's just like enormous possibilities all around us I'm wearing my Centro jacket today. Right, the Centro on campus is um, this like really cool space. That's the, where it's Chicanx Latinx Student Success Center. There's also a Black Leadership and Opportunity Center on campus. These are places that you would see normally today. You would get to kind of like be in their spaces and meet the staff and the students who work there, and they're amazing. We have the Mosaic Multicultural Center, the LGBTQ and Women's Centers on campus. Um, the 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 staff, the people you're going to meet right now, they're incredible. They care so much. They're so excited to be there, to be allies, to, to work alongside you. So the counselors, the advisors, um, the faculty are incredible. They're, I mean, they get so excited. I've been in meetings with the faculty on different things all week. And they're even though we're in COVID, even though we're in the middle of all this, they're super excited to be doing the work that they are. And, and they're highlighting students as well. Um, and the other thing for me is that it's just a space for freedom dreaming. It's a space for imagination. Um, you know, where people can can dream things that they didn't know they could dream. So I, I've I worked with so many students that have surprised themselves. They came in and said, I'm going to be a business major, you know, and then they ended up being in the arts. They ended up being in graphic design. They ended up becoming teachers. They ended up becoming counselors and are so excited about their careers now and their their alumni. I've also like we, we right now are having searches for new faculty. And among those are former students of mine who are coming back and they say, I want to work and teach at San Jose State. They now have PhDs. It's just an incredible place. You'll surprise yourself, hopefully, in many ways when you come here. So um, I'm also excited, just like Heather is, and hope that you all have a great day. We know it's not everything that it could be if we were in person, but please ask a lot of questions. Make sure that you feel like all your questions are answered. And if you don't know um, who to ask, you're going to meet a bunch of people right now and then i'm going to drop my email in the chat i did one of these a couple of weeks ago and i got an email from somebody asking about eop and why didn't i get into eop and i was able to connect them with the eop director and they got their answers so feel free to reach out anytime have a great day all right thank you heather and marcos for those opening remarks i'm going to pass the virtual mic 
off to Dr. Nidhi Mahindra, who is the chair of our Department of Communicative Disorders and Sciences. Thank you, Brian. And um, will you be um, helping me see the slides perfect? Yep, just let me know when you want to advance. Sounds great. Well, welcome everybody. This is so exciting for us. Um, although we're still not completely over the pandemic, you know, here's to saying bye bye to the COVID virus slowly but surely. So thank you for being here. Uh, it's my privilege to be here and welcome you into the department and to give you a little uh, sneak peek into what happens in our major and, uh, you know, the, the advantages of this degree. And thank you for your trust in SJSU and being here today. So communicative disorders and sciences, if you pursue this major here, which we're really hoping you will, you earn a BA degree in CDNS. And I wanted to contextualize for you that uh, we're in the middle of one of the worst shortages California has ever seen for speech pathologists and audiologists. And we're, um, Nevada has the worst shortages. We're just one above that. And you know we are home to 20% of the country's population. So you can imagine you are desperately needed uh, to pursue these majors and to earn these credentials to become clinicians in SLP and audiology. We are one of the oldest SLP programs in California and also run one of the oldest uh, clinics within the CSU system that serve a community of clients and families uh, that are affected by various speech language, hearing, communication and swallowing disorders. We, um, our BA degree is very much broad based that gives you a strong foundation in both speech pathology and audiology so that you can go where your heart takes you as you uh, complete this bachelor's degree. These four words on the side, uh, community engaged, interdisciplinary, culturally sustaining and holistic are the pillars of Lurie College of Education strategic plan, which we also hold very uh, much close to our heart in CDNS, wanting to make sure that we live up to this foundation within our strategic plan. Next one, Brian. Um, so I wanted to give you some fast facts and also um, included these pictures just to show you, we left a party, <laughs> we miss all that uh, since we're in COVID times right now. So this is from one of our retirement celebrations and uh, some fast facts about the department. We have a team leadership approach in the department. So it's certainly my privilege to be the department chair, but I don't um, make leadership decisions by myself. And I'm joined by a graduate program director, an undergraduate program director uh, or coordinator. And she's the person in the, in the red, bright red shirt that you see, her name is Marcella McCollum. Um, our faculty are comprised of eight professors whose work I'll introduce to you in a second. We have 14 lecturers and clinical educators, two full-time staff members. And as part of pursuing your degree in the department, you also become um, students who have access to seven research labs that are quite productive in the types of projects that they pursue and one um, extensive community serving clinic. Next one, Brian. All right, these are the faces and flavors of our full-time professors in the department. And I wanted to um, emphasize that um, we really cover the lifespan and a huge range of communicative disorders. So we really truly do not have just one emphasis on one aspect of the lifespan or in one communication disorder. And this should be really exciting to you because we're really trying to encourage that there are different pathways out of this bachelor's degree and certainly into this bachelor's degree. So the people you see in these uh, slides, and I've listed their areas here so that you have access to this information, but we're also unique amongst communicative disorders and sciences departments where we um, have very full bodied flavors of both speech pathology and audiology. Our faculty are June McCullough, Jean Novak, Paul Casella, Petsu Sai, Lyle Lustigman, myself, Nidhi Mahendra, Wendy Kwa, and Megan Cuellar. Uh, some really interesting things about this faculty are also that five of the eight of us are bilingual and have actually worked as bilingual clinicians. And four of us are first-generation Americans. And so we know very well 
what it's like to come into a new country, a new educational system, and to find our way through that. And we really hope that those are the pathways we are opening up for all our diverse students uh, who are seeking this degree and certainly this educational pathway at SJSU. Next one. All right, and you know, I kind of would be remiss if I didn't also tell you about some signature features about our BA in CDNS programs. And I've been affiliated with multiple universities. So I'm very proud of some of these things that are not for granted uh, in every CDNS program. Our signature features are small sections, expert faculty that have both research and clinical training. And many have worked not only in multiple countries, but in multiple settings as clinicians. And I think this infuses what you experience in the curriculum. We have a dedicated undergraduate program coordinator made possible very much by the strong support of Heather and Marcos. I think our curriculum is robust and we are continuing to make changes to really even further amplify how do we address issues of culture, language, race, and equities, as well as health and educational disparities. We are one of the few programs in the country actually. So we fall into about 25% of CDNS programs in the country that believe firmly that undergraduate clinics in speech pathology and audiology should be accessible to undergraduate students. Because I believe that is how you know when you step into clinical practicum where that uh, litmus test of, is this what you love? Is this what you're happy being? Um, prior to deciding whether this is a pathway for graduate school and certification. We are in a phase of expanding research opportunities within the undergraduate major and really committing, maybe even doubling down that if we do our job well in a BA and CDNS program, then you are going to be strongly prepared and competitive, not just for SJSU's own programs in speech pathology and audiology, but any other really strong program that you seek out at the end of your uh, undergraduate studies. Uh, and we're so proud that we also have a very strong SJSU NISLA chapter. NISLA stands for National Students Speech Language and Hearing Association. And it is a national network of which we have the SJSU chapter. And I also wanted to say that uh, we really believe in student voice impacting our decision-making. And so whether it's some features as Danny and Alejandra's presence here or NISLA, our student uh, association chapter, giving us inputs on where change is needed within the program, including our um, student leaders, both at the undergrad and graduate level, regularly attend a portion of our department faculty meetings uh, to really make sure that their voice is heard and they have access to um, providing us those inputs. Now you might be wondering, why is there a picture of a tree in the middle of this slide? Um, I think this is to say that I really think of the BA and CDNS as giving you this really strong trunk and system of roots into this um, very rich content on communicative disorders and sciences, but there really are different branches that come out of the tree. And so I think our students are extremely successful not just in going into graduate careers in speech pathology and audiology, but for many, the calling comes to special education or school psychology or counselor education. And so um, this very diverse degree really does open up doors, um, including some have been very successful in public health and public policy uh, degrees after a BA in CDNS. So lots of options, and I hope you're getting excited as I wrap up. Next one. So please come join us. We need you. We need um, an incredible amount of diversity uh, in speech pathology and audiology. And I think being at SJSU and at the Lurie College of Education really allows us that perfect voice and space to say, this is where we start to diversify the ranks of who's a speech pathologist and audiologist today. Um, want to just engage in a little friendly <laughs> social media uh, work here today. So the first five prospective CDNS students who uh, tweet or post to Instagram about CDS at SJSU or about this session 
will receive a gift from the department. Um, we will DM the winners. So please post and tag on Twitter, uh, me or at SJSU Nisla, at SJSU Lurie, and on Instagram, our department pages at sjsu.cds.speechpathology. Our Nisla chapter is at SJSU Nisla chapter and at SJSU Lurie. Thank you for being here. Please send me any questions and have a wonderful day today. Thanks so much, Nidhi. And now we'll pass the mic over to Dr. Emily Slusser, who is the chair of our Department of Child and Adolescent Development. All right, thank you. Um, I also wanna take, can everybody hear me? Are we okay? All I see is Nidhi. Nidhi, do you hear me? Yes, okay, very good. Oh, there I am. Um, I'd also like to, Brian, if you if you wouldn't mind, introduce my colleagues, uh, Dr. Terry O'Donnell Johnson and Professor Laura Parazzi. They are both here today with us, um, our advising team, uh, to tell us more about the program today. So um, Dr. O'Donnell Johnson, do you wanna introduce yourself really quickly? Yes, I'm Terry O'Donnell Johnson. I'm a faculty advisor, as well as I teach in the early childhood focus, as well as the teacher prep plan. Uh, in the CHAD department. Thank you. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Laura. I was once a graduate student in our department. Um, and for the past 13 years, I have been an instructor and now I am also a major advisor. All right, so my name is Emily Slusser. I am the department chair. I'm also a faculty member in the Department of Child and Adolescent Development. So you'll hear us say CHAD. Um, and then that is distinct from CDNS, who you just heard about. So some of you are enrolling um, or hopefully enrolling into our programs today, one or the other, um, you're gonna be in good hands either way. So um, like I said, I'm here to talk about the Child and Adolescent Development Program. It's a very large major in our college. Um, one day I went through all the materials that we post online and inside of our courses, inside of the context of our courses, took all the text, threw it into a word cloud, and that's what we have. What's really um, important about this read of the data that we've collected here, development is central to our programming. But you'll also see that it's very broad in scope, right? So we, we do talk a lot about advocacy and we hope to prepare our students to be advocates in the field. Um, we base a lot of our programming and curriculum on research and we also prepare our students to engage and critically evaluate research on child development. You'll see parenting, cognitive development, education in there as well. So if we go to the next slide and I'll try to go through them quickly, I know that we have some time reserved for our um, panelists and that's probably what you came here for, but I'll just really quickly give you a snapshot of our um, department. So we have, like I said, a very large department oh, at any given time over 700 students and that can get its way up to a thousand if we count our majors as well. Um, and so it's definitely the largest in our college, um, but it's also among the largest in our university as well. Um, we comprise mostly transfer students. We have a pretty good group of first time freshmen as well. In fact, any given year, we're uh, admitting about 70 first time freshmen, about 100 transfer students. So again, you'll be in good company as you, um, you know, seek out your studies here at San Jose State. Um, I'll point out here that our, the pictures on these slides are, are our students. So in normal times, pre-COVID, this, this might be the experience that you would be expecting and hopefully for you coming up soon. Um, in the fall semester, we'll have some in-person courses. We'll also have some online. And then we'll have some that are kind of in between. So they meet uh, not irregularly, but infrequently on campus, just as a touch point over the course of the semester, but primarily going to be doing coursework online so as to adjust to the, the ongoing spatial distancing requirements that we'll be having on campus in the fall or anticipate having. So we have a really group, big, uh, diverse group of students. Um, we also have a diverse group of faculty. We have about uh, 40 faculty working with us. Um, and this is just a long list of their areas of expertise. Um, each one brings a unique area of, of focus. They have expertise that draws on their practice in the field, but also their research in the field. And so you'll see that come through in their instruction and also the work that they do outside of the classroom as well. All right, so next slide. 
we've got our core programming. So in child and adolescent development, our students are coming through and getting a degree in child and adolescent development. And there's various pathways that I'll introduce and talk about in just a second. But the core of the program can be represented by the core of the coursework. So some things that you can check out online are program learning outcomes, but also the coursework as it gives you a snapshot and insight into what you can expect in our program. So we do have all of our students take a research methods course, for example. All of our students take courses on socio-emotional development and cognitive development, basic principles behind development, foundational courses. We also, um, all of our students take a practicum course and all of our students engage in a senior seminar at the end of their studies. All right, so what do we have up next? I think that we're gonna go ahead Thanks, Brian, and just introduce the various pathways that we have, just so you can get that squared away in your mind. I know that there can, every child and adolescent development program like this can be different. Um, I know at different uh, institutions, they can be split across different disciplines. They can have different pathways. So let me just make sure that this pro the programming in um, our department is clear. Um, so one of those pathways is a preparation for teaching. Um, so this is for students who want to become elementary school teachers. They can pursue a, a program, a pathway in our major that would give them the subject matter found, uh, foundational requirements. So math and how to teach math, geography and how to teach geography, as well as the pre-professional experience requirement that is needed to apply in California for a post-baccalaureate credential program. In fact, we have a pathway in this major that if you follow precisely allows you to waive one of the admission exams for a, a multiple subject credential program. So the intention there is to prepare and effect, efficiently and effectively our undergraduate stu students to then go into a career, a post -bac baccalaureate education and career in teaching. All right, and then the next one. Um, now, these are students who are going through our program, again, getting degrees in child and adolescent development. This particular group of students is pursuing a pathway that will allow them to focus on early childhood education in particular. So a great pathway for our early childhood students. In fact, we have quite a few. And our preschool teachers, anything to do with that uh, younger age group from birth to age five or age eight. This pathway prepares our students to graduate with the site supervisor level of the California Teacher Credentialing Child Development Permit. So it's a it's one of the most the highest in the hierarchy level um, of preparation as you engage in the field. All right, and then finally, we have uh, a pathway that is focused on community programming. So serving children, adolescents, and youth and families and community settings. The picture here, and I should have referenced to the, the previous pictures, we've got our own lab school on campus. That's what you would have seen in the previous slide. This um, bottom right hand image is a map of all of the different uh, agencies that we partner with. Um, actually, it's more of a sampling of all of the different agencies we partner with in the area to get our students experience working in the field as they pursue, pursue this particular pathway in their programming. So again, I do want to keep an eye on time. So Brian, if you just take us through to the final stretch, then we can pass the mic over. There we are. We've got lots and lots of extras. We have a Chad Club that's been in operation for over a decade with a vast network of alums. Um, we have a newer club, the Early Childhood Student and Alumni Network. That one spans across the different departments and disciplines and colleges across our university. So we have a, a very interdisciplinary core. Anybody who's interested in early childhood is welcome to uh, uh, join that network as well. Um, in the most recent semesters, we've had to be very intentional about how we're engaging our students in these virtual formats. So in fact, in addition to the previous slide, we have lots of newer opportunities as well, including a developing honors program, a chat ambassador program. Um, as, as my colleague had been introducing before, we do invite our students into faculty meetings, chat programming meetings and the like, because we do want to partner with our students on these educational journeys. And so the more input we get from our students and the more engagement, the better we're all off for it. 
So um, Terry or Laura, anything to add on that? Otherwise, I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Those are a, a small, a, a quick snapshot of a, a small collection of our faculty, but we are excited to welcome you back uh, to campus. Mm -hmm. Just an added note for those students who are um, entering in the fall, we do have advising for you um, all throughout the summer so that we make sure you're off to a good start, that you're taking the classes that you need and that you're on a pathway to be successful and graduate on time. Thank you. Yeah, nothing else to add here. I'm excited to hear from our student panelists. Likewise. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks to you all for providing the overview of our child and adolescent development department. Um, so next, I would like to welcome some of our current students to the virtual stage here. So let me change out the spotlights. So we have Alejandra and Danny joining us from the Department of Communicative Disorders and Sciences. We have Desiree joining us from our counselor education department. And we have Edith joining us from our child and adolescent development department. Look at that, I can introduce you all and spotlight you at the same time. I'm able to what is it, walk and chew gum, is that what they say? So I wanna thank you all for joining us. Um, I know just among the four of you, you have just such a wealth of experience um, as students in our college, just between your, your academic experiences, but then you all also have been heavily involved in our college and across campus and a lot of um, you know complementary, like co-curricular and extracurricular activities and leadership roles and whatnot. So. I know you just have so much, uh, so many insights and wisdom to impart upon our new admits who are joining us today and watching this recording. So I was wondering for uh, the first question, maybe if, if a couple of you could just share an example or a story of a significant learning experience that you've had in this past year as a student at SJSU. Whoever wants to share can go ahead and unmute and go for it. Okay, I'll go ahead and start. Um, hi, I'm Danny. I'm a Communicative Disorders and Sciences major. I'm a junior here as well. Um, Alejandra is also a junior with me. Uh, we're so excited to be here with you today. Um, there's been so many significant learning experiences that to try to just narrow it down to one is a daunting task. Um, I can definitely think of how the leadership initiatives for students in um, in the Lurie College has really helped develop my interest of multiculturalism, bilingualism, intersecting with the way that we interact with our clients and with the children um, and how we prepare them to be successful in a world where they can bring their exposure and their culture to their own growth and to their own professional development. Um, for one, uh, the Chicanx Latinx Student Leadership Retreat was an amazing experience. Um, and it really kind of develops some awareness for me of what are the kinds of cultural issues that are associated for people of the Chicanx Latinx background um, and definitely gotten some interesting conversations started that didn't just stay limited there. I've been having wonderful productive conversations with faculty members and mentors. Um, and it's just amazing how all those things complement and strengthen each other and have contributed to the professional that I want to be. I would say for, hi everyone, my name is Desiree. I am a graduate student ambassador here at San Jose and so represented EDCO, so hey. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I would say even, this is my first semester, first year here at San Jose. And I, I have seen like, even though this is a virtual, everything has been virtual since I have started, I have been able to definitely get involved um, just, everywhere <laughs> so any opportunity I've seen I have definitely um went for it in terms of if it's in the classroom or outside the classroom and I think there is just a variety of you know being a graduate student I'm learning so much um in my classes and um and which leads to just a lot of different learning opportunities um if it's an internship or being up to date on a uh, you know, getting involved in the community. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely say I have had a lot of opportunities and one of the opportunities to be a student ambassador, um, uh, which is, has 
variety me for have had the opportunity to learn a lot about San Jose even though I haven't stepped foot <laughs> on campus so which has been a great learning opportunity um, is using the resources that has been given to me so awesome thanks so much Danny and Desiree for sharing those experiences with us and I appreciate that you highlighted specifically opportunities kind of outside of the classroom and even outside of your department and outside of the college too because there's there's just such an abundance really all across campus for students to get involved take on positions of leadership gain different academic experience professional experience network and make connections and build relationships with you know your your classmates who become friends and faculty members who become mentors and um, and that's really, you know, so much of the experience is really about making those connections and cultivating those relationships, um, because those ultimately, you know, help support you along your academic journey. Awesome. Um, so for this next question, maybe Alejandra and Edith, if you want to respond to this one, what's a strategy that you've implemented for yourself that's enabled you to be um, academically successful, especially this year where, you know, it's, uh, we're really trying to navigate all this remotely. Hi everyone, I'm Alejandra um, and I'm a part of the CDNS department and I'm also a student ambassador. Um, so it's very easy to say that the way we have learned has changed tremendously um, this past year. Um, for me, it was really hard to get adjusted to everything being online um, and not having that peer interaction that we all really enjoy, um, especially starting my program here at the CDNS department. Um, what's really worked for me is having a strict schedule. Um, and I don't mean this in the way that you'll be working 24 seven, because realistically, there's a way of getting it done and still having time for you, which is so important. Um, so uh, what helps me stay organized is having a to do list for every day, um, saying this gets done before I even think of this. Um, last semester, I had a 24 unit semester. I got it all done and I was still able to do fun things, whether it was go to club meetings or um, being honest, going to Starbucks or going to Home Goods, um, having time for you, which is really important, but still making sure you're um, taking care of your academics. Hi, everyone. My name is Edith Urbano. I am a third year Chad major. Um, for me, I would say like similar to what Alejandra said, having like a schedule. For me, my plan planners have been like my best friend because right like through those planners, I'm able to like bracket what I need to get done, check off what I already finished and stuff like that. But definitely um, finding time for yourself. For me, I usually have a schedule from like Sunday to Friday. So like Saturday is like my day off. I tend to like not think of like classes, not even think, okay, um, what did I do in this class? What grade did I get? I feel just to like separate um, work life with like your own like personal life, just to like establish a, a healthy relationship, I guess you could say, just to make sure that like, you know, when Sunday comes, you're ready to like tackle on the week. Awesome. Thanks to you both for sharing those insights with us. I definitely feel you with the, you know, organizing and scheduling piece. Um, for those of you who are new admits, SJSU is a Google campus. And so we use the whole like Google suite and I put everything in my Google Calendar because if it's not my calendar, it doesn't get done. But I definitely appreciate that both of you also emphasized, you know, it doesn't mean that you're just scheduling work related or, you know, kind of academically related things all the time. It's really about also thinking about how you're going to dedicate time to take care of your other, you know, obligations or responsibilities or just have time for yourself to just decompress and take care too, because that's all really important um, just for thinking about your own, you know, kind of holistic development as you go through each semester and each year. All right, so for our next question, um, whichever uh, two of you wanna jump in, you can feel free. But I was wondering if you can share an example or a story of how you've made a connection with one of your professors or maybe with an advisor or a mentor and maybe give us a little bit of insights about how that relationship has kind of cultivated and what have been some of the benefits of that relationship. Um, we've heard a lot about the CDNS department, um, and I'm going to continue talking about the department because I feel so lucky to be a part of it. Um, I wish I could sit here and tell you how each one of my professors has helped me um, and just been a great professor, but um, I have to give a shout out to Professor Lestigman, who really believes in her students. Um, they are long classes with 
nothing but lecture, but I walk out feeling like I learned more than I walked in with. Um, she encourages her students to chase any opportunity that's out there for them, whether it's the Lori showcase or being a part of NISLA. Um, and I, she encouraged me and I did it last semester. I enjoyed the experience so much that I will be doing it this semester. Um, she does teach language development in children and this semester um, we do have communicative disorders in children with her, um, even though my project does not involve children at all. I still have her look over everything, um, even questions that could be asked to anybody. That's who I go to because she has had such an impact since I have become her student. Yeah, I know we're going to want to hear from other <laughs> departments as well, but I'll just echo what Alejandra said. We are just so lucky to have the faculty that we have. All of them are so committed to our education and to our growth. Just I can't think of a single faculty member that I wouldn't hesitate to reach out to if I needed to talk, that I wouldn't feel uncomfortable wondering if I can ask them for some of their spare time. Even Dr. Mahendra is so committed to spending time with her students, connecting with them and gaining their perspective. And it is so meaningful. Um, I would say for me, a significant um, moment I've had with someone in the CDNS department was definitely meeting Janine Perez at the um, Chicano Chicana Center. I remember going as a freshman and telling her like, you know what, um, I wanna be secretary of education one day. And like through that relationship, I was able to like find um, resources at the Lurie College. And at the Lurie College, I was able to find the Promise Group who got me connected with a mentor in the Lurie College department. And through there, I was able to like find other resources I was able to find you know, a job, I was able to find other clubs and organizations that I've been able to meet even more faculty members also in the CDNS department, as well as the chat department. Right now, I see a lot of like the speakers, I see some professors and some other people I've worked with before. So it's definitely, I guess, just opening that like, um, the opening yourself up to like a variety of resources is definitely something that's helped me a lot as well. Awesome. Desiree, do you want to go as well since everyone else is shared? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this is my first semester and I, you know, all my professors are great, but I do have to say that I did do my own uh, intentional reach out to another uh, form. Well, yeah, she's about to graduate, but another uh, graduate student. Um, and I saw that she was mentioned <laughs> on the Instagram page. I saw that she was on the Facebook page and um, this particular student, I said, well, wow, she seems like <laughs> she's really involved. And I noticed that she was a student ambassador and she was in Lorraine College doing masters in counseling and guidance. And I say, you know, let me reach out to her to get some insight on her experience as being a student ambassador, her um, experience being a, a graduate student in the program. Maybe there's some tips or some advice that she can give me. And she did, her name is Brittany um, and shout out to her. <laughs> so I definitely reached out intentionally to uh, about a current uh, fellow uh, classmate or well, grad student of mine and in the same program as I, who's about to graduate in May. And um, I, it was really beneficial and that led me to really uh, pursuing, um, reaching out to Janine and then applying to uh, the student ambassador role. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks to all of you for sharing those experiences with us. And I, I think just collectively among all of your responses, it really helps highlight how there's all these different types of connections that you could make, right? It could be with you know, a current faculty member that you have, it could be with your department chair, it could be with a staff member, it could be with another student in your program who's just a little bit further along in the program um, because all these folks have all these just different you know, uh, insights and resources and connections that they can kind of share with you. Um, and you all highlighted how like just making a connection with that one person has led to becoming aware of these different resources or opportunities and getting connected to different positions of leadership or research opportunities or thinking about graduate programs. 
letters of recommendation, right? All these things that kind of come as like, like kind of a, um, an outcome of just making these connections and just putting yourself out there. Um, so thank you for sharing all that. So for our final question, maybe we can just open this up to all four of you again as well. What would you say has been your favorite or most valuable campus resource and why is that? I'll start off. Um, I'll be a little biased um, because I do dabble in taking care of the Instagram for the Lori College Success Center. Um, but the resources um, on there are quite beneficial. You find out about workshops you may have not even know existed. Um, their story is always pretty full with information, whether it's last day to register for summer courses, the first day, things like that. And safe to say that we're all on our phones. We all check Instagram quite frequently. So it's nice to get updates from there. Um, another resource is definitely um, NISLA. So if you're in the CDNS department, NISLA is a great organization to join. Um, I have formed relationships with all the board members that are seniors in the department right now. So any question that I have, they're always happy to answer um, any guidance. Um, we also have a graduate liaison um, that lets us know more about the graduate program. So that's overall a really great resource and I feel lucky to be a part of it. Similar to what Alejandra just mentioned, um, I am a little biased too, <laughs> but I would definitely say, uh, you know, Luray College, all our social media, um, our Student Success Center, everything that we are offering. And now that we are virtual, um, our websites and our social media is like more important than ever to access information about what is happening on campus, what is happening, um, you know, different workshops, what's going on. And so, and especially in different departments. Um, and as a graduate student, um, who is their first semester, of course, you might not know because during the pandemic is not in person. So really leveraging and utilizing, um, you know, following us on social media and then all everything that's happening on like our website and even our newsletters uh, has been really great too. So we are aware of what's going on. And um, I would say that that has been really a great resource um, for me. And I think definitely for everyone in the college. Yes, um, I I can't comment that much on the social media. I don't have any, but um, as far as like the student success centers, honestly, they've been phenomenal. They have been there from the beginning of my journey here. I remember first seeing Janine when all the orientations were getting started and just knowing like, okay, if I need help, I can turn to them. Um, but it, even if you don't have social media, they'll keep you updated on emails and everything. Like you won't miss a thing. Like they cover all their bases, which is great. Um, so getting access to resources through the Lurie College Success Center, um, also the Chicana Club Next Student Success Center, um, peer mentors, all of them are so involved and so approachable. Um, that if you need any insight, like they are right there to point you in the direction that you need to go. Yeah, just adding on, like, you know, before the pandemic, the Student Success Center was like my go-to place. Like if I um, needed help with any classes, I could like meet up with um, classmates there. I could also, I remember the bulletin board had like job postings, like um, also like flyers about other workshops and stuff, but definitely like the transition to online has made like um, using social media more like frequent because I can see okay what's being offered and seeing things that I didn't know were being offered and I'm like oh my god like I should probably like look into this and stuff so it has been super super helpful. Awesome thanks y'all. <clears throat> I promise we didn't pay them to give special shout outs to all of our college resources. I think our college resources are just the best so thanks for highlighting those. All right so uh, to wrap up, I would like to welcome the director of our Student Success Center, Janine Perez, to the virtual stage here to give us a preview of some of our upcoming events for the remainder of Admitted Spartan Days, and then answer any remaining questions that you all have who are joining us today. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Um, so I'm really excited that you all are, are still hanging in here. I know it's been a long morning for you with uh, Admitted Spartan Days activities already getting started. 
Um, and we're really excited for the next couple of weeks. So we used to have to cram this all into one day. One of the benefits of it being virtual is we can take our time and really individualize the information that you're going to receive. So on the screen here, you'll see some of our upcoming events that I really want to encourage you to register for um, and attend if you have not registered yet. So this week, we will have a uh, frosh welcome and advising Q&A session. Uh, that will be on Thursday, and that's just for frosh, both CDNS and Chad. And then next week, we will have our transfer session. So that's another opportunity for you to meet with the Student Success Center team um, and department faculty and advisors and, and to ask some questions. That will be next Tuesday. Another activity that's happening next week that is really fun. It's fun for our, our future students. It's also fun for me because I get to learn new things about colleagues is our faculty ask me anything session. Laura Parazzi, who's with us today, is going to be uh, one of our uh, panelists that day. We'll also have a faculty member from CDNS. And that's just a time for you to ask them anything. Um, we'll talk a little bit about their journey into education, into the work that they do, what it's like um, at San Jose State and in the Lurie College of Education. And yeah, you can ask them anything. And then I saw in the chat that some folks um, have already been thinking about, you know, what's next? What's next after the BA? I saw a couple of questions around um, occupational therapy, child life specialist, uh, elementary school teaching, high school teaching. So I want to encourage you to also check out our alumni panels. So April is our alumni month and we have several panels taking place. I do have a Chad alumni who is uh, pursuing a child life specialist right now. Several uh, elementary and high school teachers, um, SLP, uh, CDNS grads. So lots of folks that are have, have been there and are now in their journey of uh, their careers and would love to be able to share that information with you as well. So lots happening this month. We really look forward to your participation. If you have any questions, um, any lingering questions about, you know, uh, completing those next steps, the intent to enroll, please feel free to reach out to any of us that are on the call today. Um, Dr. Brian will be sending the recording and our contact information. We'd love to be able to just kind of chat with you and, and answer any of those, those final questions so that you can get your intent to enroll complete and we can see you at orientation. All right, is that it? We finished on time? I think so. Look at that, hey. Awesome, well, we still have a, a few more minutes actually. We have five more minutes until we wrap up. So uh, definitely happy to hang out. Uh, definitely appreciate you all joining us for the live session today. But as Janine mentioned, we are recording these to make them available for you afterwards in case you missed anything or if you're not able to attend any of these. But I'll just go ahead and turn the music back on. And then if you all have any more questions, feel free to go ahead and just put them in the chat. It looks like there's been a lot of activity going on there as we've been having these conversations. So uh, I think that's it for now. And then we'll look forward to seeing you at the next event at Spartans Day's event.